Everybody get close enough so they can see these red guys. What is, what is that? Uh, the yellow guys are the nerve guys. Those are arteries. Those are the red guys. Arteries. My carotid arteries. Or my, they're my vertebral arteries, actually. My carotid arteries are right here, where I can poke on them. My vertebral arteries. How come they call them vertebral arteries? Are they along my vertebrae? No, they go inside. They are inside my vertebrae. They're not even along my vertebrae. They are inside my vertebrae. Okay? So, if there's not a lot of extra space in there, and I make a great big motion this way, or this way, or this way, I can occlude that artery inside my neck because there's a finite space. It is not uncommon for me to see, and then if I got a little bit of plaque in there, and I slam bone on bone, and there's an artery pinch between them, and it's got a little bit of plaque when I snap back, Sometimes that little piece of plaque can go to my brain. That's usually a bad thing. It is not uncommon, but is uncommon. It's not unheard of. I see it several times a year usually when a person has gone into the chiropractor and their neck has been manipulated and pop, they manipulate their neck and they break off that little clot and it goes to their brain and they, they get, have a stroke. So they, they went to the chiropractor for... Um, a neck manipulation, and they went home with a stroke. Now you scare me from the chiropractor. <laughs> I'm just telling you that's what happens. Oh. Is it is it possible for people to have stents in that area? Is are there stents? They won't small usually stent in there? inside a vertebral artery. They won't. Okay. But along, what about along the, the carotid? Carotid. I know. Well, they'll they stent the carotid. So you could have a patient that might have a carotid stent. Which would give less flexibility and movement yes. in that area. Alright, so I'm going to teach you the vertebral artery occlusion test. <laughs> and it's a test that they do to try to make sure that there's enough patency in your artery, that there's enough space in your artery for doing the activities. So you as a PTA will not be manipulating necks, okay. popping necks. Uh, me as a PT, legally in Missouri, I believe I can. I choose not to. Um, and that's just not my area. I do know PTs that manipulate necks, and it's not, this isn't the time to give my talk about chiropractic, but um, especially time. Stop talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling us everything. I was telling, we were talking about the vertebral artery test and occluding it and giving you a stroke. So, I'm going to do a vertebral artery test, and we're going to do it on Mitzi here, and we're going to do some activities to check to make sure that her artery is patent before we do extreme motions in range of motion. A positive test would be, oh, I'm a little lightheaded, or that's a little bit painful, or, you know, anything out of the ordinary is going to be a positive test, and we're going to want further looking into before we go on. So if you go to the chiropractor who's manipulating or she's manipulating your neck and they've never done a vertebral artery test, ask them what they think about it. Maybe they'll tell you they think it's hogwash. But we have seen people that we will get that positive test and it will show that they are having plaque build up and stuff inside their vertebral arteries. And then as a, as a clinician, we probably don't want to do extremes of range of motion until they've been cleared by by uh, the physician. Okay? So, um, now, if every single time that I do a uh, uh, range, do I end up doing a vertebral artery test? Not necessarily. I'm not going to be doing big extreme ranges. If I'm seeing someone that's post whiplash or post some kind of neck injury, I, and I'm going to be doing, getting to those extremes of those motions, then I am going to do a vertebral artery occlusion test. Later when we learn traction, some people that do traction will say you need to do it before you do that. You're never moving that person into those crazy positions, so I don't necessarily think it's a must. All right, so go right down. And I'm going to move this a little bit so everybody can see what's going on. All right, so what I have to do is I'm going to try to get her through the different motions of her neck 
and I'm going to do those and I'm going to stop and check along the way to make sure that she's doing all right feeling wise. So is anybody looking at it in their book? Are you looking at it in their book? I think it's page 120. There's a little table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I have to do is I have to get this thing out of my way. And in here, these two tables are the only good ones for doing these. Those aren't going to work as well. And i got to get this thing all the way out of my way. So now she has to be comfortable here with me supporting her head. So i got to give her enough pressure that she feels like she doesn't have to hold her head up. All right. So before I do any, any combination movements, I want to check all the plane motions. So what motions do I have in my head? Rotation. Rotation. And I have flexion. side bending. And I have flexion and extension, right? So I'm going to flex her. And I'm going to have her hold it for just a little bit. What does it say in there? 10 seconds? Or just say it says 10 flex to 15 it. seconds. And then I'm going to bring her back to neutral. How do you feel? You feel all right? Yes. Now I'm going to go into full extension. I'm holding her and I'm supporting her. I'm going to bring her back up. How do you feel? Fine. All right. So I've done flexion extension. I'm going to do right rotation. This is where I might start including things. Bring her back. She would. <laughs> I'm back to normal. Or I'm back to here. Okay. You feel all right? Yes. So now I can do some, the extreme. So I've done flexion, extension, rotation. Now I can do some extension with some rotation, and that's going to be the most occlusive position. and extension. Back up. There you go. Good. So she passes her vertebral artery occlusion test, and now I can do some rotation. I can do some stretching with her. I can bring this back to Depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, I can do some of my rotations here. don't want to ever put any pressure on somebody's jaw. I'm doing most of the support right there on them, you know, grabbing right in here and supporting there. So, bring her all the way over here. And when you see me do this in the gym, you see me doing this with my shoulders, just because I, it takes less pressure on me and my back. Squatting and I'm turning them all the way over here, and I'm turning them all, all the way over here. I can actually push on her shoulder a little bit and stretch her this way. Now I'm stretching that trap, muscle that superior trap. Okay, so. If you use this table and that table, you can take that stuff off that table. This will drop all the way out. If you're on one of these other tables, um, what you're going to have to do is just scoop the person up, and they're just going to have to scoop themselves up and get themselves in this position, and then you can support their head with you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jocelyn. All right. So test someone's vertebral artery. This is up. Oh. 